If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. Pure common sense tells us that any relationship that's based upon one person trying to control another person is destined to fail. It's just not the way that you manage things in a clean and healthy way. We each have a free will. We each have our own distinctives. We each have our own separate interpretations or preferences or priorities. And when we engage with each other, we realize that we can stay interconnected with one another in the midst of our differences. And we can learn to blend and harmonize and actually benefit because of the differences we bring to each other. Narcissists don't think that way. Now, at the base, we can say that narcissists are very self-absorbed. They're very enamored with themselves, which then allows them to presume that they can and should be in control because they feel very entitled and they must be in the superior position. And so this sets them up to try to figure out how they can have domination over the people that are in their closest circle. But underneath all of this, there's more going on than meets the eye. You see, narcissists are deeply insecure. They've been exposed all their lives to a judgmental system where there's a pecking order. And if you, do, if you line up correctly on the pecking order, you win. But if you don't, then you're going to receive shame. You're going to receive ridicule, uh, ridicule and people aren't going to hold you in high regard. So uh, they're constantly wondering, well, am I enough? Do people respect me? Am I going to be deemed as credible? And instead of trying to come to terms with those thoughts and questions and issues inside the context of our differences with one another, narcissists have decided, consciously or subconsciously, the best way for me to be a somebody, the best way for me to come to terms with my own inner tensions is to dominate. And so they have all these different games that they come at you with that's part of their domination system. And so it's going to be of utmost importance for you to know what their gains are so that you can stay out of their clutches because uh, the, they're, they're going to just, it's predictable. They're going to come at you very strongly and they're just not going to let up. And so I want to go through seven of the most common domination games that narcissists will use to diminish you. And let's see if we can uh, develop an, an awareness of that so that you can move on to something that's much uh, more uh, appropriate for you. Now, the first game, domination game, that I'm going to identify here, I, I'm going to call it my opinion only, okay? When narcissists approach you or other individuals, they start with the notion that says, well, there's one opinion in this room that matters, and it's not you. Narcissists begin with an authoritarian attitude towards other individuals. They use a lot of binary thinking, black, white, good, bad, in, out, you're on the team, you're not on the team. And so they bring that authoritarianism to you. And over time, you realize there's no interest in them receiving any kind of input. They are not interested in nuance. They're not interested in complexity. When we say the name of the game is my opinion only, what they do is they pontificate. They just declare, here's the way it has to be. Now, a second game that goes right on the heels of that is what I'm going to refer to as shut up. Okay. Now, narcissists want to be dominant. They have to be at the top of the stack. And so they uh, are playing that game, my opinion only. And so it, it leads them to think, yeah, and if you have something to say toward me, it's not welcome here. And so you have your opinions, you have your preferences, you have your interpretations, but in the, the narcissist domination system, you're required to just keep it to yourself. Whenever you try to give your input, whenever you say, hey, let's think about this, or I didn't like the way you handled that, shut up. 
you're invalid and you get lots of messages of invalidation and you get lots of messages of condescension where it's, it's very clearly indicated, I don't want to hear from you, end of discussion. Now, a third domination game that narcissists will play, and I'm going to call this, you'll be sorry. You see, let's continue on and recognize, well, just because a narcissist brings a lot of that domination and authoritarianism and they don't want your input, it, it doesn't mean that you cease having your own need for individuation. It doesn't mean that you cease having your distinctives and you want to have that freedom that I mentioned. But whenever you try to initiate uh, in that direction, the narcissist will then double down and let it be known. If you go in a way that's different from me, in other words, if you have your own free preferences, I'm going to make you pay. You'll be sorry. And so punishment is very much of the, a part of the way that they engage with you. They're not at all bashful about giving threats. Uh, you will be crushed if you uh, uh, go against them, particularly on any kind of long-term basis. You'll be thwarted. Your efforts will be minimized. And this is where narcissists can come on with lots of rage or uh, insistence and pushy and, uh, and insistent kind of communication over you. You'll be sorry. Now, a fourth game, a domination game that narcissists like to play, and I'm calling this the whole world will know. You see, once they bring all this authoritarianism and then they don't want to hear your uh, your input and they're going to make sure that, uh, that they give you punishment for you being you, they can't stop there. They're going to, uh, uh, they, they like to actually humiliate you. It's like, okay, so if you think that you're going to be separate from me, I'm going to bring other people into the game and you'll, I'm going to humiliate you. So they're not just satisfied to shut you down. They want to bring others against you and have the same kind of contempt, uh, that they have toward you. And they, they can be, uh, authors of a, a misinformation campaign. They can say all sorts of things that are distorted or taken out of context about you. You're going to be sorry. You come against me and it's going to be a big price to pay. Uh, the whole world is going to know. Now, a fifth domination game that narcissists will play is I I'm calling this one. I'm beholden to no one. Now, as part of their domination, they want to superimpose on you, but then when it comes time for them to be reminded that there's this thing called, oh, I don't know, accountability, <laughs> we're all interconnected, uh, instead of them saying, well, you know, I, I realize that I, I have my preferences, and uh, but, but there are boundaries and there are uh, rules of the, and regulations that I have to uh, be aware of, it's like, no, I'm beholden to no one. Uh, rules, standard oper operating procedures don't apply to the narcissist. They refuse to have accountability. And when you get to the point of saying, well, I I'd like for us to put some, uh, some parameters in place. It's like, no, you don't understand. Uh, I, 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 I owe nothing to no one. You owe everything to me. Now, a sixth domination game that narcissists might play is I'm going to call this one, I'm beholden, I mean, excuse me, uh, I, I've got nothing for you, okay? So not only uh, do, you, do they want to superimpose, they don't want your input, uh, they're going to do a smear campaign, they don't want any accountability, there'll be times when they realize that you're just not going to be on board with them, that they'll go into this passive-aggressive, withdrawal, ghosting, evasive style of interaction, I got nothing for you. And so when you say, well, look, let's, let's work on this. Let's see if we can create a, an atmosphere of teamwork. It's like, where'd they go? They won't return your calls or your texts and, and uh, they'll uh, promise to do something to assist you. And then they don't, I got nothing for you. And then they just kind of go into this stubborn non-participation style. And then the seventh domination game, and I'm calling this, I've got people. One of the things that narcissists love to do is they love to draw people around them 
who will go along with them and do their bidding. And of course, uh, many of these individuals are not aware of what they're dealing with or what they're getting into. Some of them are the flying monkeys who know what the narcissist is all about. And they're attracted to that authoritarianism. They just don't feel like they can do it themselves. And so they uh, have authoritarianism uh, vicariously through the, uh, the narcissist. But well, whatever it might be, narcissists want to create a group of people around them that will buy into their group thing. And then what it does is it puts that much more pressure onto you. Oh, so you don't think like us, huh? What's wrong with you? And so you become the outlier, you become the outsider, and it just creates more of a, a, a discomfort uh, within yourself. You're lonely, and they want that to work to their advantage. So you look at this, like I mentioned, and it doesn't take a lot of genius to figure out this is not a good way to do relationships. And yet most narcissists are not just inclined towards this domination style. They're deeply committed to it. They have these games. And when you push back on them, they're just going to double down and, and make it even worse. They will not quit. So when you see these games and, and uh, having an, an identification of them is so essential for you, it reminds you that you're going to need to have your boundaries and, and boundaries means you have a definition for who you are and you're going to live into that despite their attempts to take you away from that. Uh, you're going to have your own separate initiatives. Uh, it's like, you know what? I don't have to run my life through this individual. Now, that being the case, you're going to have a life uh, that's going to uh, not be well coordinated with them. And so you don't really need to make any effort to justify or rationalize why it's okay for you to be you to that narcissist, but just prepare yourself that this is not going to be a, a, a successful relationship. You won't have closeness and then make your adjustments accordingly. So we're going to close here by saying narcissists are the consummate game players. Life to them, relationships to them are a competition. And not only do they have to be in the superior position, they do everything they can to try to stack the deck so that you lose, you're the designated loser, and they're the designated winner. On Team Healthy here, we realize there's an interconnectedness that we have, and we try to learn how to blend well with other individuals. And when narcissists prove not only can they not do that, but they just have to be that dominated or a dominating force, then I'm hoping you can decide, you know, I need to move on to relationships where the game is not already rigged in advance against me. And I hope that this gives you some good awareness of what you might be dealing with. Uh, knowledge is power, and the more you're able to see it, then the more you can make uh, appropriate adjustments to it. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, go right ahead and do so. We'll keep more videos coming at you. About halfway through, Gus is, I guess, shaking his head thinking, I've heard enough. <laughs> Actually, he's over here down next to me now. He just wanted to change positions. Gus and I will keep more videos coming toward you. If you have a need for therapy, and I know that many of you, as you go through these kind of issues, uh, have decided, you know, I could use somebody that could help me unpack this. And we have a, I'm, I'm so pleased to be uh, sponsored by the people at betterhelp.com. Uh, there's a link below and there's a whole team of licensed professional therapists that you could choose from. It's a very popular way of uh, managing counseling and therapy right now. And, uh, and it's affordable so, and it's accessible for you. So uh, I would encourage you to go through that if that's a need that you would have. We also have my therapeutic courses. And when I say that, they're like online classes. Uh, there's multiple videos and then teaching documents and uh, written materials, uh, or guided questions that will guide you towards uh, uh, therapeutic goals. Ready, set, connect about having healthy connection skills. This is me about those boundaries that I'm talking about. Free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. For those of you in the podcast world, we have my podcast. Uh, we have books, uh, my website with many articles on there and other resources. Narcissists, they want to play domination games with you. Uh, but the good news is it's, it's not a game or it's not a competition if you don't uh, choose to participate. S uh, stay separate. And in doing so, I'm hoping you can commit to your own self-care because at the end of the day, you deserve to be a person of peace. I so hope that you can find your peace.